Hello, everyone, and happy Wednesday. Welcome to Aces Up the Sleeve. Starting things off a little bit different. I'm not usually the one that gives this intro. That's always Patty, but bless her heart. She's got a big migraine today, so I am doing it all, and God help us, because I'm. this is not my, not my forte, but that's all right. So we are uh, going to talk a little bit today. We've got a special guest. It's uh, Morgan R uh, Richardson. She is with Keeneland Horseman's Relations Office. Is that correct? Director of Horseman's Hospitality. Is that the correct? Yes, title? sir. Yes, right. sir. Yeah. Cool. So, so Morgan is here with us, and she's going to you know shine a little light on what they do in, in Horseman's Relations and Horseman's Hospitality, especially at Keeneland. Uh, you know, some tracks are better at others than with taking care of their owners and their constituents and so forth. And Keeneland is second to none. So, um, she, Morgan here, uh, she's she's runs the oh, best. Oh, thank you. Well, you're very welcome. You run the best outfit in in the business. So, um, yeah. So just uh, let's just start with a quick introduction. Tell us about yourself, a little bit about the office, how you got into into thoroughbred racing, and and we'll just take it from there. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me today. I'm so excited to be on. Love a good little chat. Um, yes. So my name's Morgan Richardson. Um, I, I'm not from a horsey family, um, but I've loved horses my whole life. I started riding when I was five and got the bug, rode ever since, um, owned horses as well. I have a 26-year-old off the track at the moment named Al Fayez. He's my child. I love him. Um, but I kind of got into high school and you know, everyone asks, what do you want to do with your life? Where do you want to go? And I was like, I would love to combine the two things I love the most in this world, horses and parties. Um, and so I was like, well, it, it seems like a nice job, but I feel like I can figure it out. So I looked all over the country for programs that had uh, hospitality management um, alongside equine. And there's only 10 um, in UK. I'm from Chicago and Michigan and Texas originally. Um, and I came down Kentucky, loved it, went to UK, um, ended up being the first person to graduate with kind of that combo. Um, so hospitality management, tourism, equine management, science, and business. Um, just might as well get all the degrees. Go for um, it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that was just kind of my, my, my call, right? It was like hospitality in the equine industry. Let's figure out what this looks like. And I worked at a lot of different places. I worked up at Spruce Meadows. Uh, which is like a world-class show jumping facility in Canada. Uh, worked there for a little while, worked with EEI that puts on the Kentucky Three Day here in Lexington at the Horse Park. Um, worked for a bunch of different catering companies, worked in a lot of different fields with polo, with jumpers, with dressage, um, all sorts of different sorts of equine activities. And then I kind of landed in racing. Um, I got an internship at Keeneland when I was still in college in my senior year, and I was in uh, Keeneland Select in marketing, which really meant that I got to help um, kind of kick off and run the Bedologist program. Okay. I don't know if you've nice. seen them around, yeah, but they're the people in the fun little fedoras with the bow ties mm -hmm. and the vests. So that was me once upon a day. Um, I had my own video series, Basics of Bedology, and I would teach people how to bet. And I just fell in love with the sport. Um, I was hired on shortly after that in events. So I um, initially here planned all of our corporate events and weddings on property um, and then did business development in that same vein and did that for about seven, six, seven years. Um, then when Shannon came on um, as our president, she kind of grabbed me and was like, hey, I love what you've done in events. I think that we should do the same thing for horsemen. Um, we had, you know, different horsemen activations and different touch points for them year round, um, but it wasn't necessarily a, a cohesive program. Um, I think we were also looking at sales and racing clients as different clients, whereas a lot of times they are the same. Um, and so that was kind of her goal. She was like, I would love for you to take a fresh look at the program, figure out how we want to shake it up, um, and then kind of carry on from there. So that's what me and the whole team have been doing uh, this whole time. I absolutely love our team here. They are so fantastic. They always have great ideas. And I feel like what I really appreciate is we're never afraid to try new things. So you give it a shot. You know, see if sure. it works. If people love it, you keep doing it. If not, you pivot and you move to something else. Um, but I just love the creativity and the ingenuity of the team here. And I feel like we're always striving to be better and to just make more people fall in love with racing. I think that we all have our moments where we kind of realized I love this sport and it's right. just 
kind of curating that and other people at the track and at the sales where we can. So when you know, you, you mentioned, you know, trying new things and new, having new ideas, just, uh, I'm, I know I'm, yeah. I'm going off script already. What are some of the new things <laughs> that you guys have, uh, have in place for the upcoming fall meet or even the upcoming uh, sale uh, starting next week? So. Well, in, in the past is actually, if I, if I go back a couple of years when I first kind of took over this department and trying to help out as best I could, um, it's actually one of your favorite spaces, which is the bluegrass room. Yep. Um, so the bluegrass room used to be seated dining. Mm -hmm. It was just little four top tables and you sat in there and there was a buffet for a little while. And then it was a little more casual for a little while. I was like, I just feel like horsemen like lounges, you know, they come, they go, they want a place to perch. I pitched it to Gatewood. He was like, I love it. Let's try it out. And so then that's how we kind of formed the Bluegrass Room. Um, as you know, it today is kind of a, a massive horseman's lounge. So um, six lounge, very similar kind of conversations and concepts. It was like horsemen come, they go. We just need a space that has like the energy, right? So when you mm -hmm. come in, you feel like you can talk to other people because we have, we're so blessed in this industry to have such wonderful other owners. And even if they're not in your same little circle, it's very cool to get to meet other people and create a space right. where you can have those conversations and learn from each other. Well, we're all competing against each other, but at the same time, we all depend on each other too, you know, it's in terms of exactly. the owners and the trainers. I mean, uh, you know, that yeah, it, it, we gotta have, we gotta have all of us. So no, I, I, I love yeah. that bluegrass lounge space. And, you know, it was, yes. you know, I remember <laughs> I, it was fine as the bluegrass room, but it's so much better as the, as, and I, you know, every, anybody that knows me, they know I'm not, I'm not one for going up into the clubhouse and getting all gussied up and all that. Yeah. I, I prefer my blue jeans and all that. So, yeah. the, so the bluegrass lounge, that's my favorite place. Uh, my favorite place at the track. So uh, that's a yeah. job well done on that for sure. Thank you. Well, and as we look towards the future, I mean, when you come out here, I know that everyone probably caught on to it a little bit in the spring, but you will definitely notice it in the fall. Um, we are undergoing a massive project that will um, kind of wrap up in the fall of 25. So the goal is to be ready for the fall races next year. Um, so it is a massive expansion. We actually took down our old offices that the um, like full-time team members mm -hmm. were in. Um, so the new building is going to run all the way from the clubhouse to the saddling stalls. Um, it's got like 1200 extra seats in it. So hopefully with some of our, you know, we just have such high demand, which is a great thing and a challenging thing all at the same time, but hoping that this will provide some really nice other dining accommodations for our fans that want to come out and enjoy the races with us. It should have great views of the paddock, um, which personally, I mean, I love the races obviously, but I really love the paddock. I love the people. I love seeing the horses. I love being closer to the horses. And I think a lot of the new layout is going to help with that too. So where your horses currently are in the far end of the paddock at the saddling stalls, kind of in that little round, mm -hmm. we're actually going to move them into the new building. They'll all be along the straight so you can see them a lot better from the general viewing areas alongside the paddock. Um, and I think it'll just get, get people a little bit closer to the horse, which is always our goal here is to get people as close as we can, because I feel like if you can see a horse and you can feel their energy, you automatically get drawn in. So now did that kind of come out of the, the, the temporary seating that they had for Breeders' Cup, the, the, the chalet tent that looked over the paddock? It seemed like it was always a really popular area to be in. Yes, very popular area to be in. And I think we've talked about expanding into that space for a long number of years around here. Um, so finally, just kind of getting the chance to pull the trigger on that guy. Um, but to a footprint standpoint, yes, it will take a very similar footprint to where that um, Breeders' Cup tent was, but the whole building will be contiguous. So it'll be one Okay. fluid building instead of little buildings next to each other, which will be really nice. And hopefully you don't notice that there's a whole change from old to new. We're still casing everything in our classic limestone and um, it should hopefully look like it's been there the whole time. Well, you know, as, as I've been going out to the track since about 1976, because I was about five then. A couple and, years. And so that's, I've been going out there <laughs> that, that long. So it's going to look a little bit different, but um um, I, you know, I, yeah. it's going to take a little getting used to, but I, I trust that uh, it will have the same feel and, and look to it that, that the current facility yeah. has, which is key. I mean, if it didn't, I think you'd have a, a full blown revolt on your hands. <laughs> so, <laughs> Agreed. So you, Agreed. you mentioned, uh, you know, the, the need for more seating and accommodations and, and, you know, better viewing. Um, 
and you, you know, this, this is not certainly not in your, um, you know, your realm of responsibility, but I know that you are involved in discussions and hear about it. And I have never, over the last two meets, especially, it seems like getting any kind of reserve seat, uh, just to, to, on the, on the website when they opened up at 9 a.m. six weeks before or eight weeks before the meet or whatever it is, you can't get tickets. Yeah. I was on literally for two hours and 15 minutes before I got through the system uh, last week. And it was, and I was on there at nine o'clock and nine on the dot. It took two hours and 15 yeah. minutes. What's going on with all that? <laughs> and again, I know you're not responsible, yeah. but I know you're involved. You're, you hear yeah, what you hear the stuff that's happening. I'm to help how I can. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, demand, which again, it's, it's kind of like I said before, it's, it's a good problem to have, but it also creates its own challenges. Um, we've kind of blown up a little bit. People are excited to come out to the races. I mean, we sell out in, you know, a couple, 30 minutes, an hour um, for most days, pretty much all days, um, as soon as tickets go on sale. So I think a, a big part of it is probably that we, once we had COVID and we stopped just opening the gates up to everyone um, because we really didn't have, if I'm being honest, real max capacities for the track. We right. never sold out of GA. Um, we would sell dining rooms, but you could always at least come in the gates. And I think what we learned is that that's, is kind of making the experience for everyone average instead of providing a really exceptional experience for the people that are actually here. Mm -hmm. um, our physical facilities just couldn't hold it. I mean, concession lines, bar lines, like we just physically didn't have enough space to cater to people. Well, restrooms, restroom yeah. lines, the physical infrastructure um, was just having a really hard time keeping up with the mass amounts of people that were in. And I think when we got into COVID and we learned that we had to limit our numbers for legal reasons, we're like, oh, this actually kind of allows us to provide a better experience to the people that are here. And so instead of opening it up, like we do sell out of GA now and we do limit right. a little bit of our spaces a little bit more just to make sure that we can provide a really great experience for the people that are here. Um, but in that, we've really ramped up the other areas where we can accommodate a few more people. So the hill, I don't know if you've been up there lately. I know it's probably not your jam. It's just but a little, it's it a little is young a for me. Ton, <laughs> fun on a race day. We have like tent partners with WebLXP and I mean, you can just like rent a tent and they'll do catering and they'll bring your tables and they'll bring your chairs and they'll set a, you know, a signage up for you even. Um, and I mean, people just have big old parties out there. We've got fun. We've got massive TVs. You can watch the races. We've got live bands. There's uh, auxiliary gift shops, food trucks, restroom trailers, you know, shuttles that'll take you back and forth to the track. So I think we've shifted a few people that way as well to say, right. hey, here's another way to like celebrate in the races with people around you. Um, that doesn't necessarily is the seat at the track, but it is kind of your own personalized space and a different part of the property where you're surrounded by other racing fans and you still get a cool experience on a race day. Um, but I know that it is challenging and I'm so sorry. I wish that oh, we could know. just like take everyone in. Um, <laughs> But from a horseman standpoint and from you all, I mean, I know that you and I work together a lot, but we do try our best to accommodate as many horsemen as we can. Oh, yeah. So um, that's usually kind of our go to. And Lord knows I am a, a pain in your tail all the time because I'm all, all the time. asking. No, we love time. you guys. We love and, excited owners. And I'm going to be, I'll, I'll be hitting you up for those tickets that the days that I didn't get tickets last Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always happy to help where we can for sure. <laughs> Um, but I mean, to your, to your point, usually for, from like a, from my side of the world, um, we try our best to take care of owners and trainers and connections to all of our horses that are running as best we can. So for undercard horses, that's usually four tickets, um, to the bluegrass room or an outdoor box if we have them. And then stakes accommodations is our dining rooms, mainly the stakes lounge, um, for six tickets, uh, and then trainers of horses, two tickets as well. Well, so I, I will we try you. our best to get everyone here. We love like that's like how I measure success in my world and like how many owners and trainers are here and connections for the horses. And if I have full races where there's someone here for every single horse, like that's a great day for me. And that's how I kind of measure success. And I know a lot of our team goes off of that as well. So the busier you are, the more successful now. you are, basically is what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> I mean, if your horse is racing, it's so great to have everyone here supporting them and excited about it because that's what it's all about, Absolutely. right? I mean, we put a lot of time and effort and love into it. Mm -hmm. and you should get to be here for the fun parts. I 100% agree. And that's uh, that's why we got, we, I think we got 26 of us trekking down to Kentucky Downs on Thursday. So uh, we got, so that should be a, should be a good time. 
And uh, yeah, it's, you know, you guys do a fantastic job. And I know that, you know, even if you have half a dozen other people who are, you know, emailing you and calling you all the time saying, Hey, can you help me out here? Can you help me out there? I know it's, uh, it's got a wear on you at times, but uh, it's, we certainly appreciate all you guys do for, for, for all of our people. And, and, you know, you're, you're always, you always come up with something for us and that, and that's great. So, so when, when you're outside of the meet, what, what is, yes. what's your office typically working on and what kind of project? I know you got sales coming up and I know you're busy for sales. So, so what are you doing yeah. as the sales are approaching and what, what, what is yeah. your office, what's your role during the sales? Yeah. So our office is over racing and sales hospitality, technically. So I see a lot of people in both settings, you guys probably a little bit more on the, on the racing side, but um, we're also over all sales hospitality as well. So that is everything from what is the experience when you're here on grounds to concierge services, um, planning events while everyone's here. So your paddock parties, your equestrian room, your brunches, your surprise and delights, your barn celebrations, your ornate activations, your airport activations. Um, so we kind of help to manage all of that for sales. So it's, it's a pretty, it's pretty involved for sure. Um, for all of our different touch points. Um, but we love it. I love sales. They're one of my favorite times of year for sure. Um, and then all that takes quite a bit of planning. So in the off season, that's not racing our sales. Um, the months leading up to it are pretty busy, just getting all the pieces mm -hmm. together. I mean, as you know, putting together syndicates and days at the races, the day is always fun and big, but it takes a lot of, a lot of, sure. a lot of people moving in the right direction on the back end to get it all put together. Um, and then off season as well, we also do a lot of activations and hospitality at other locations. So, um, for instance, like two weekends ago, we, um, sponsored the Alabama and the Delmar Oaks. So we would fly out there, activate at both tracks. Um, so anything that Keeneland or Keeneland sales touches off property, um, my department's also over in regards to horsemen. So we keep ourselves pretty busy throughout the year. Um, and then we have the championship sale this uh, coming October 30th out at Del Mar with Breeders' Cup. So it's going to be it's going to be a nice packed fall for sure. And so you get to you want a great gig. You get to travel around to Saratoga, Del Mar, just all over the place to see great horse racing. Yes. Not, not mad about it. Fantastic horse racing. Good people. Yeah. I love it. So I will be in touch with you before the sales. Cause I know we've got some, uh, some new partners coming in. They're all excited. So I'll just touch base. Yeah, and, uh, we love that. When we'll be out. Well, of course we'll be, sh we, we probably don't start shopping until the second week and it's a little over our budget until, until that, That's all right. until that second Monday rolls around. All of it. That's, it's still a party. Oh, it's absolutely. still fun. Absolutely. So I, and, it, and I will say this, that there's no doubt about the, um, I think back about the sales grounds and the sales and activities around the grounds five years ago. It's nothing like it is now. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a party over there a lot of the times, which is great. And it's, we try. Yeah, it's, it's really, I mean, I just, I, Patty's heard me say before, and people have listened to the podcast, but have heard me say before, you know, the September yearling sale is literally my, two of my favorite weeks of, of the entire year. Uh, because Great. you've got so you know, 4,000 plus horses coming onto the grounds and it's just all of that potential and excitement and, and you're bringing new horses into your stable, whether you're, you know, you're buying one for yourself or you're buying five or six for your group or you're buying, you know, the biggest and most expensive horses that come through the sale. I mean, it's just, you are, we're all trying to tap into that potential of each and every one of those horses and hopefully find the next big winner. And just the, for me, the high you get off of that, of just being there and seeing it all and watching those, all those horses go or circle around that ring and like, well, that could be a really good one. And that could be a really good one. And every one of them mm -hmm. could be the next champion horse and whether it sells yeah. for a thousand dollars or it sells for you know two and a half million. That's what, that's part of what makes this game so, so wonderful. Well, and I mean, in September, I always like to explain it to new people of like, hey, you're trying to find like LeBron James in middle school. <laughs> That's right. You're trying That's to right. look at <laughs> <laughs> all the top middle schoolers and be like, who's going to be mm -hmm. the next NBA pro? And that's exciting, right? I mean, Absolutely. like, because to your point, you said you guys usually come more in the second week, but I mean, the amount of amazing horses that we've had lately that came out of the second week is astonishing like amazing grand one winners i mean all sorts of super super impressive horses Absolutely. Um, lately that came out of those books i mean there really is quality all over the place i think it's just what are you looking for yeah. and can you kind of spot and then guide that horse along the right path to make sure that it meets its full potential 
And that, that is the challenge. If only we can measure their, their um, heart and their drive and their desire when we, when we see them in the back sales ring. But yeah. uh, alas, that, that, that all comes out later. Um, so just think about um, two things. First, okay. your favorite relate, racing-related moment at Keeneland. And then if, it's, if there is another one outside of Keeneland, you know, just two things that really stand out to you, memories that stand out to you, events, um, you know, Keeneland related, non Keeneland related. Okay. Um, Keeneland related is probably, I mean, I have so many of them. I mean, my husband and I met here. Um, he's the director of broadcast here. So we okay. met here, got married here, a whole nine yards. Um, so he'll probably be mad at me if I didn't say that. So I'm going to throw that one in there, but more racing related. <laughs> Um, I was so blessed I got to be here. I've been here 10 years now. Uh, so I got to be here for the 2015 Breeders' Cup. Um, I got to watch American Pharaoh win uh, and then got to plan and help execute the entire celebration after that with the press conference and everything leading up to it. So that was, those were Very pretty nice. hard moments to beat for sure. Um, and then outside of here, I don't know. It's so hard. There's so many great memories. I mean, we just went out to Del Mar for the weekend. It's just so beautiful. I, I don't know. All the different tracks are so special in their own ways, right? I mean, I don't know. I just love the individuality and the different personalities. I think that before I traveled around to a lot of the different tracks, I didn't quite appreciate or understand that each track has their own personality. Sure. I mean, you know, Saratoga is kind of like this big, fun horse Carnival. carnival. It's a carnival. That's the only way. It's, it's a fair um, or a carnival. It's like, it's like fun, it's fancy, but it's also casual. And like, I don't know, you can walk everywhere, which is lovely. But then you go to Del Mar and the ocean's right there. You can walk on the beach and then go see a horse race. I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, food is fantastic out there. I love a little bit of seafood. Um, I don't know. They just all have their own their own amazing moments. And I, just, I don't know. I've really enjoyed getting to know the people. I'm a people person at heart. Um, and I just love getting to hang out um dave and i got to hang out at saratoga that was yep. so fun we had the best time the mayor of saratoga kind of hanging out and... yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's, he's going to be down in october the first weekend of, of the meet and um i don't know if you ever saw oh, his great. little um uh, the little web uh, youtube series we did uh with dave at saratoga when they had the belmont at saratoga uh he spent yeah yeah so he spent you know a couple of days just going around interviewing everybody and he's planning on doing the same at, at uh, keeneland that first weekend so I love i'll be it. talking That's to you perfect. about that and uh you know who we need there to get in touch with so um yeah and uh, yeah so you know we're really looking forward to that and um and uh he's just uh he is uh, the most passionate fan of racing I think that I know. And it yes. just, it's, it, he's a delight. So, um, so if you uh, think about this for a minute, and this is something I ask all of my, all of all the guests that come on the show, um, okay. you know, racing has changed a ton over the last, well, since we've been doing this for about 20 years, changed a ton in the last 20 years, changed a lot, yeah. really a lot in the last, three or four, two or three or four years. Um, still, we got some changes that we need to do, some improvements we continue, we need to continue to make. So if you are a queen for the day, you're in charge of all of North American racing and you can snap, oh, your, you can snap your fingers and make one, one change to the industry, to the business, to the, to the sport. What do you, what do you change? Hmm. It's a good question. I feel like, and this is probably my my job and my, my passion coming through, but I think just constantly, I think everyone has their own different experiences at the different tracks, right? I mean, we just kind of talked about that, but I feel like honing in on that and not being afraid to experiment with new ideas and new concepts. Um, I think so frequently and so easily, it's it, we just get in our own little ruts, right? You're like, hey, this works, let's keep going. And I think just everyone has such cool ideas. I mean, if you just sit down and go to dinner with clients, go to dinner with owners and trainers and jockeys and consigners, like you just learn so much along the way. Um, and just finding those unique ideas and opportunities and then being able to actually execute them and put them into play and say, hey, let's try something different and see if this works too. Um, I just think the innovation is so key for us and continuing to push forward. And I think with that innovation comes the growth of fan bases 
and ensuring that the experience really does draw people in and gets them excited to come out to the races. Uh, I, I love so much at Keeneland, our kids club program. Oh, yeah. uh, we have a whole program and like staff members, so that's their job, um, is running kids, kids club and like promotions and things to get families out here. And I know that technically it's not tied to the horses and it's not a direct correlation, but I can't tell you the amount of people that I've met around here. And I think that's why we do have a, such a great fan base. It's like, oh, I've been going to Keeneland since I was five years old and my dad used to take me out of school on Fridays and we go to the races and those are some great memories for us. And I think just how can we all collectively help build those memories um, for our respective fan bases um, to continue the sport, right? I mean, you've got to continue your fans. You've got to keep people engaged. You've got to give them a reason to be excited and want to come out. So I think that's where it starts. And then the ownership and getting a little bit more involved kind of comes down the road. But I think if you can, if you can start there, it's a great, great place to kick it off. Well, and that's, that's the great thing. I, you know, when we, when we started this, there were just a few partnership groups and most of them were at, you know, really high dollar levels. And we were one of the first to have, you know, some smaller, you know, uh, amounts of you know, smaller ownership, you know, dollar amounts that you could get involved in. And now you've got my rate horse and there's a few other people out there kind of where we are. And, and though they're, again, you know, they're a competition, but I think they, for the most part, they've been really fantastic about drawing new people into, into the ownership experience. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, we've had plenty of folks that have come to us from my racehorse. They've gone from on from us to own their own horses. Um, and, and, okay. you know, we, we had people that have joined us that had never even been to a race before. Uh, they just were gamblers and they th liked the idea of gambling. And now they bet on racing, all the time, you know, they'd never bet on a horse race because they were, but you know, they play poker and they played blackjack and all that. And like, oh, this looks like a gamble. I'll do that too. And and then they then they become fans of of, of the game. And so you're exactly right. You know, you just always got to be. We, we have to do a much better job of encouraging new people to come in as owners, um, even at the smallest level. And I think a lot of times, uh, some folks in the industry don't really like that. But uh, you know what? That's that's fine too. You know, it, it takes all kinds. And, uh, but I think, uh, you know, it's just the more, the more people we can get involved at all levels, I think the better off that we are. So. Agreed. Agreed. Well, and it's, I don't know. I mean, I, I just love to your point, like you're all starting syndicates and having syndicates that, that meet different needs. Like that's innovation, right? Like that's saying, Hey, this is an opportunity within a marketplace that we can help fill. Um, and what you're really doing is helping reduce barriers to entry, which, Historically, our industry has a lot of um, so saying, hey, you don't have the knowledge base and maybe you don't have the super high dollar amount, but you can still be involved and you can still be invested. And that's just a stepping stone. And maybe you get excited and maybe you realize that it is worth a little bit more investment and a little bit more of your time and energy. So I think that. It's fantastic what you do. I love your partnership. I feel like you guys come out to the end to the races with amazing crews and everyone I've ever met from you all is so nice and kind and just excited to be there. And we really appreciate you all bringing, bringing your horses out to Keeneland and bringing the groups out to Keeneland. And we love having you. Well, I, as far as I know, we're going to have several running out there this fall and uh, you know, can't wait till the, till October, uh, rolls around and uh, look forward to Bring it on. look forward to bugging you to death about getting me some bluegrass room. Uh, no, no, we never mind. We never mind. We love having you. Now, if you can, if you can just drop another little whisper in Shannon's ear about that box for me, I'd really like to get that pocket aces racing box. I'll fill it up every day, every day of live racing. It'll be full. <laughs> I do know that. That is true. It would be full every day. I believe you for sure. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Morgan. I know you're getting, you're busy, you, the sales coming up. So I know you got a lot going on and you're in right behind that is, is the, is the October meet. So thank you so much for being generous with your time and joining us for a little bit today. Of and course. Uh, uh, thank you all for having me. Sincerely appreciate everything you do for us. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And uh, you know, as, uh, as, as Patty always says, Hey, have a happy Wednesday and make good choices and all that. And the podcast is out. <laughs>